Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to some more coverage from the UK OCR series in 2024. This is the second race in the series. It was held at the very majestic Capestone Hall that you can see in the background there. It was Born Survivor and it was up in Cheshire. So everyone who is running a green vest is who you need to pay attention to. It's quite a big field. There's quite a lot of people, which is so cool to see. Anyone who's wearing a yellow vest is someone that's in the marathon wave. They are doing multiple laps of this course, but we're only following the ones in the green. So straight away, as you come out of the start pen, it's up and down these hills. Up, down, up, down, up, down. There's not a lot of elevation there, but it's just quite a taxing start. And it really does split up the field quite quickly. On the last hill, you've got these hay bales that you need to launch yourself over. Nicely demonstrated by Dan Tickham in the lead there, followed by the rest of the men. Amy Hales in the lead for the women here. And she's probably in what, the top 10, top 12 men there? Honestly, a machine. We love to see it. Look at her go. Josie Lloyd, the second woman, rocking those coral socks. That makes it nice and easy to pick her out on the field. Things we love. Karen McQuarrie in third place. After they've done those hills again and again and again, they have a little run section before they come into the next set of obstacles. Dan Titcomb being chased down by Morgan Maxwell and Finley Greenleaf from Rumble there. Liam Mitchell out in fourth place, looking really strong. We've got some just little walls into about a six foot wall, into another little wall here, just to split up the field even more. Imi still looking so strong, running with the men. Incredible. Jason Morlam, another rumble racer there on the left. And they're all still quite tight together here. After another run section, they come into these mud mounds, just over the mud, into the water. And Josie, the way she launches that one is so impressive to me. She just made so much space. It was quite cold as well, but that does not bother Karen McQuarrie because she comes from Scotland. She is so used to it and she loves the cold water. Josie's looking very comfortable there running, very comfortable. She has a fell running background, so this course should not be too much of a challenge for her. This course didn't really have many technical suspension obstacles. It was more of a military style horse. Amy Hales in the water again. And this water just looks gross, doesn't it? It's so muddy, but she's just straight in there. Off she goes. Love flat, not phased. And Liam's just had an accident there, which is really unfortunate. He had to cut his race short, which means he doesn't get any points for this race. The way Amy's doing that makes me laugh a lot. I don't understand why she just doesn't get in the water, but maybe she's protecting those vibey pickle shorts. I would too. This was the first carry of the race. So you come in and men and women have different weights. That's why there's different pens there. So you come in, you grab a log, you run all the way up to the top of the hill, round the tree, back down, drop your log back off, and then you get into this obstacle, which you were supposed to do on your back. Good that Dan eventually got the memo and flipped over. But Russell did that very efficiently. Caught Dan very well on that. Imi, first woman into this carry here. Still looking so strong, so smooth. Josie chasing her, making up a bit of ground. And yeah, you can definitely tell the different weights because look at that size of the log that the men have got compared to the one that Josie just picked up. And here is the women's battle for third place. Karen McQuarrie being chased by Ellie Brimacombe. And Karen's lost a buff. Where has that gone? <laughs> Amy off the carry, nice. That log looks so much bigger than the one that Josie has got as well. Josie's made up a bit of time there, love that. 
this race was in late April. I think it was the last weekend of April. And it's so nice to see all the bluebells out through the woods. It's just so beautiful. It was like peak British springtime, but it really wasn't very warm at all. It was quite cold when you were in that water. These trail bits were so lovely to run. The fields were quite hard to run because they were full of like muddy animal hoof prints. So it was not very easy to run at all, but the forest bits were lovely. This was the only suspension obstacle on this course. You could choose whether you wanted to do monkey bars or the rings. Imi took it nice and steady and got across those monkey bars very easily. Josie takes the rings and she does those very safely, which is wise. It's not a banded system race. You could have had as many attempts as you would like, but she needs to stay in the place where she is. So she really needed to clear that first attempt. Still looking so smooth on the running. I don't know why she picks the same lane as this man here. I think he slows her down. I think she would have been much faster through that crawl if he wasn't in the way. You're about to see what Immy has just come off of, which is a giant slide, which freaked out a lot of people, but apparently not Josie Lloyd. Look at her, straight down, off she goes. Dream. And it felt a lot higher, you know, in real life. It felt way higher than what it looked there. It was scarier, I promise. Immy just still cruising, looking so... Oh, we even get a little hair flick there, style icon. Here she comes. There was so much water on this course, honestly. This obstacle is always so much harder than it looks. It just really slows you down. I'm not sure if there is a way of doing it quickly. The way Imi just grabs that with one arm and pulls her whole body up is so impressive to me. So impressive. And she's back in the water again. Josie took that really aggressively. Love that. Very nice. She's still holding on to that second place. And this obstacle here, very, very, very similar to Tough Mudder's Cage Crawl. I just think there was maybe less water in this because as you can see, Imi's got like her ears out, her whole head is out of the water and when she nails that technique, look how far back she reached and pulled herself forward then. Dan Titcomb still in the lead for the men, followed by Russell Walsh. Finley Greenleaf in third place, look at him go, yes Finn. And then Morgan Maxwell and Ricky Carino in fourth and fifth there. Pickle shorts, close up, love it. I really like it when people wear really crazy things to races because you can identify them so much easier. These tunnels really freaked me out when I was racing because I thought it was just going to be pitch black and a straight line. No, they were zigzags so I went head first into the next sheet of tarpaulin. I'm sure Imi didn't do that, I'm sure she's smarter than me but yeah, wild, I was so confused. Come on Imi, do the flip, don't let me down. Show everyone what you made of, do the flip. Of course she does. And she basically clears the whole net in that. Dream, look at her go. And this is Dan Titcomb coming into the final lot of obstacles here. He's got about four or five more left to go at this point. Being chased by Russell still in second place. Inverted wall, easy. Finley Greenleaf. He looks so good when he runs as well. The dynamics of, of his pace, of his form, like everything just looks so smooth, so great when he moves. And he's been chased down hard by Mo. Look at this. Mo's gonna take him. I love watching Mo do obstacles. I just love watching Mo race. It's so impressive. He takes everything so aggressively. It's like, don't think, just do. And it's so cool to see it in a race. So cool. 
Yeah, and it's taken him. Look at that. Wild. Can he stay there, though? This is about a 10-foot wall down there. Oh, Moe's cleared it. Finn missed it. Straight off. Here he goes. Charging. Yes, Mo. Finn's coming. Can he catch him? There are just two obstacles left. Once you've cleared that wall at the end, that is it. That is the finish line. You are done. Into a dunk tank. He's just got this final run on this wall. If he clears it first time, oh, and of course he has. He has secured the third place for Rumble Racing. Finley Greenleaf, hot on his heels there in fourth. That was really exciting to watch. I loved that. Loved that. And your men's podium for this race was Daniel Tickham in first, Russell Walsh in second, Morgan Waxwell in third and Finley Greenleaf in fourth. Imi coming onto the world's easiest balance beam there. It was so wide. It was so secure. <laughs> and this obstacle is like a little rabbit warren. <laughs> she looks so happy. She looks so chilled out. And you can see the other side of this 10 foot wall right now. It, if you thought about it, you could do it a lot more efficiently. So Imi has used the step and she has used the lips on the planks, which is very smart. Pickle shorts have taken a beating. And I love the way that Imi just doesn't hesitate about things either. She gets up, she gets in, she gets through, she gets out. It's very cool to see. And that is why she is in first place. Her transitions are amazing. Her running's amazing too, obviously, but she saves so much time on stuff like that. Yes, Ims. Imi hails for Nuclear Phoenix over the line, first place for the women. Josie Lloyd into these final obstacles now as well. Let's go, Josie. Big fan of that sideways crab movement, by the way. And this is Karen. This is Karen Macquarie. She has overtaken Josie somewhere. What? How did we miss that? If Karen makes this up the ramp, she has secured second place. Of course she does. Karen Macquarie, where did that come from? Josie Lloyd, come on, Josie. Holding on for dear life. I love the determination here. I love it. Yes, nice. Come on, come on. Amazing. Over she goes in third place. Karen Macquarie in second place. And Amy Hales in first. What a women's race. How exciting was that? Where did Karen come from? Ellie Brimacombe for Nuclear Phoenix there in fourth place. And then we've got the rest of the women's field attempting this war, which was honestly a lot harder than it looked, but it was nice that that lip was there if you could get the reach. Shida Haney coming in as the first woman back from Rumble Racing. She had a really great run on this course as well. Shy typically doesn't like races with lots of water, but she smashed it. Great performance. What an exciting race. But let's just chat you through the top 10 from this race. So Dan Titcomb in first place running for Nuclear Wild Forest. Russell Walsh coming in second for Fit Body Farm Freestylers. And Morgan Maxwell coming in third place for Rumble Racing. Followed by Finley Greenleaf in fourth, Ricky Carino in fifth, Jason Brunnock sixth, Gavin Hogarth in seventh, Leo Brimacombe in eighth place, Anthony McLaughlin in ninth place, and Das Oscanella rounding out the top ten for the men there. On the women's side, we've got Imi Hales absolutely dominating that course with a lead of four minutes for Nuclear Phoenix, crushed it. Cara Macquarie coming in in second place for Fit Body Farm Freestylers and Josie Lloyd running for Primal Fitness in third place. Fourth place was Ellie Brimacombe followed by Nicola Gillespie, Shai Dehaney in sixth, Ruth Battersea in seventh, Deborah Love in eighth, Emma Kirkwood coming in ninth place and Susan Jarman rounding out the top 10. What a race! That was so fun and it's so different to anything else that we've got in the series this year. So we have our next race coming up quite soon. Let's see how the standings look after that. Let's go, catch you soon!